So hello and welcome back to TNTV, your weekly relationship video with myself, Tony V, and the amazing Nikki V. Now this week, we have probably one of the most contentious things to share of all time. It's not a contentious subject, it's a place of contention. Yes, so this week, hop, pin back your ears if you are in a relationship where actually there are certain times and certain places where it gets even more difficult to stay in connection. Because we have this place where we've had many, many couples, haven't we, say that this is a place where disconnection can happen really, really easily. And um, we are no exception because we, yes. we are definitely falling into the bucket of trouble when we do this very one thing. So what is this one thing? It's when you get in a car together. <laughs> yeah. So one of you will be driving, the other will be the passenger, and it's like everything in your relationship that doesn't work, generally speaking, gets completely magnified beyond right. all levels of understanding. Yeah, that, it's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? It's like it multiplies, it magnifies it. it. If there was anything going on which is not good between you, it seems to be that in the car, it will happen. It will come to the fore, it will come to the, the top. And what we've, obviously, as Tony said, we've had this experience ourselves. We've also had many, help, assisted many couples who have had this problem. And we have today for you the very thing that's going to stop it. It's Indeed. going to stop that level of disconnection. And it's going to be that you're going to be driving along the car and where normally you would have had a bit of a ruck, as we call it, you're now going to look at each other, or maybe not look if you're driving. <laughs> um, you're going to say to each other, uh-oh, okay, we're just doing that old thing, and we don't need to do that anymore. Yes, the car alarm will go off. Yes, in a the new relationship way. car alarm. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So, like, I think probably, you know, one of the most amazing things is, uh, obviously, we've now been together for 11 years, uh, which is fantastic, of course, you know, considering I think that I am now Nikki's longest surviving relationship. That, that it's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look, it yes. It says um, more about me than it does about my partners, I have yes, to say that. Yes, indeed, indeed. I obviously um, suffered in a much longer uh, debacle <laughs> before I learnt this stuff. And certainly the car was a very hot place in my first marriage. Anyway, bless. Um, yeah, so the car. Uh, yeah, so this relationship of now 11 years nearly faltered at the first hurdle in the car. It was about how long? About six weeks? Yes. I think? Six, seven weeks. Very luckily, yeah. very luckily, we had a very good coach sitting <laughs> in the back of the car. As it happened. As yeah. it actually happened. And we ended up in the service station, Nikki in the girls' toilet, me sitting in the car. And, um, you know, it was all like a bit in the air, really. But in many ways, of course, we as we always say, how would it be that it's all perfect as long as you take from it an understanding, yes. a meaning, maybe a lesson that you can then carry forward into your life and beyond. Because we were very clearly very near to blaming each other, making each other wrong. And of course, what does that do? Well, we know that from video one, the whole blame game, that just moves you further away from each other. So. Luckily, with the coach in the car, we didn't fall into that trap. Even though our chemistry was very heavily set off, we're both a bit adrenalised. We both started to like defend our position so that we weren't wrong. Remember that old one where you know you don't want to be wrong, so you dig your heels in and you make sure that you defend your position. And by doing that, of course, you're making the other person wrong, and all this gets completely out of hand. And for many people. They just end up in the divorce court if yeah. they're married or, you know, they break up if they're not. And also, you know, you were facetiously saying about my short-term relationships, but that's one of the things that I have a pattern of. Indeed. And I have a pattern of going, and I was literally sitting there going, okay, this means that this relationship's not going to work for me, so I think I better think about getting out of it. I mean, honestly, after six or seven weeks of complete and utter, the most bliss I had ever felt in the whole of my life, we have this situation, and because it is my old pattern to go, okay, end, um, we nearly, you know, got to that point. But, and if you don't happen to have a coach sitting in the back of your car, what are you've you got do? us. <laughs> yeah. What are you gonna do? So remember this clearly what um, we did. Well, firstly, this particular time, we did actually stop Nikki did go to the loo. She's, it's one of the best places. I mean, it's sort of the greatest thing yes. about being married to Nikki B is that she goes to the loo. She goes in like, you know, 
bit grump, well not a bit crabby, crabby. But she goes crabby. in a bit crabby and <laughs> Wonder Woman comes out, you know, it's like amazing. Somehow something happens in there and girls, if you want to know what that is, I'm sure we'll be discussing that at some other stage some of other the stage. game. Yeah. But also, in, in thank you for that, that's very nice of you to say that, but of course, I, as I'm Mrs. Crabby when I get into that state, he is Mr. Grumpy and he, what Tony does, which is absolutely brilliant, which he must have been doing in the car sitting outside the service station, was having a little chat with himself going, okay, could this be, is this familiar to me? Is this a space I've been in before? And actually, you know, maybe I need to look at this in a certain different way, which is what he's so brilliant at. Yeah, so what we started to do very quickly, and this is where, you know, relationships break down over a long period of time. If you don't clear the air, so say you clear the air a little bit, but the damage is like still stays there. It's like it's particularly true for women, probably more so for women than men, but men do do this as well, just less aware of it, yeah. is is that they stack. Yes. So we stack, you know, well, that situation happened to them, that situation happened. That's because we never forget anything. Yeah. yeah, and of course, before you know it, you've got 50 examples of, of, <laughs> of why, when you've done it before. you know, of this, <laughs> well, this person doing these things to me. But remember, that's the victim yeah. state, and you'll never yeah. solve anything from that state. So certainly the conversation we had with ourselves on yes. that day and um, turned everything around and we all got back in the car and we were all happy and you know do you think we face that again the answer is absolutely because Nikki did actually uh, have an accident once which left her with a bit of a, what we call an SEE um, which means that in certain states she goes into this very nervous state and of course you know for men sometimes for men they take that very personally it's like a stab in their masculinity you know you can't look after me you're not driving safely and unfortunately most men behave badly in that situation badly from the woman's viewpoint because they want to prove that they are formula one drivers and <laughs> that they are you are safe with me so they start yes. driving faster and more scarily but actually guys i recommend that this is not the way to do to fuse your relationship challenge and actually all I do when I notice Nikki, you know, beginning to get scared is, of course, I could make her wrong as I stop doing that and stop being stupid. But, of course, it's been set off automatically based on something that happened in her past. So what I do is I turn on my compassion switch and think to myself, she's just in that place of fear right now. So if you had, like, a little child in a place of fear, I often say, well, look, if there was a child in the supermarket, like, lost crying you wouldn't go up and have a dig at them would you you'd like give them some love you give them some compassion so that's what i do i turn on my compassion dial and go look darling it's okay you're safe and then maybe i do you know pull over and you know change what's change what's happening for her and she immediately changes i mean it's like so instant and so that's a diffusing of the situation it's not about me giving up it's not about being a winner or a loser it's about staying in connection and meeting each other's needs and it's also not about the woman using this to control the man yeah. because that's as equally as damaging long term as um anything else that you could name that would make this worse. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Control Absolutely. is not a good thing. You so know. you may notice something, and we haven't actually told you what actually happened in the car. And I think that's great it because matter. it's actually irrelevant. And I, you know, I want to make that point really, really clear. Now, Tony's told you that, you know, I had an accident, therefore you could argue that it's worse for me, you know, because I got nervous and got frightened. And actually, Tony did not like being controlled, so he felt like he was being controlled. All that kind of stuff. I'm not even going to go into that because it doesn't matter we've worked with many many couples over the years where they haven't had that situation in their relationship but because you have got a driver and a passenger and you have got different views on how one should drive and how one should be as a passenger is that what it tends to do is as we said magnify and you know multiply anything that's actually going on already and what was fascinating is about what we now obviously can reflect back on that is what I noticed when I was in the ladies loo and what Tony noticed about what happened when he was left in the car on his own where he needed some quiet time to think about it is we both recognized that this was nothing to do with now it was nothing to do with each of us no. it was the fact that in our old relationships when we didn't know what we know now we were seeing that as behavior that had you know crossed a line for us a behavior that was outside of what we were prepared to be okay with so for argument's sake because i went into a certain state 
I started to try and tell Tony he was wrong. And Tony, did, you know, had a, a kind of, had had a personal kind of chat with himself many years before and gone, you know, that's not going to be present in my, my great relationship. And exactly the same with me. Because I was trying to get him to drive differently and because in the past I'd had that fear and with, with a different man, I'd actually said to myself previously, I'm not, if anybody ever does that, if anybody ever drives in a way that's not right for me, I, I, you know, that would, that would cross my line. And so both of us absolutely realised that we'd gone into a past situation with past relationships and we would, had made this about each of us violating some old rule that we'd got that said, this is not acceptable to me. Now, what was great is when we got back in the car, we literally looked at each other. Now, remember, you may have watched our other videos where we said, notice that when you're having a row, you never look at each other. And maybe that's one other reason why the car is such a hot spot, because actually you're not looking at each other. And in fact, what happens with us is if, if, we, if Tony's driving and I am looking at him, it feels even more kind of out of connection, you know? So actually what we did is we actually got back in the car, we looked at each other. Tony was absolutely amazing, of course, and he just like looked at me and went, okay, that, you know, that situation is not really what this argument's about. You know, I recognise he went first. He was absolutely brilliant. I recognise that this is like it was in my past relationships where I didn't know what I know now. I didn't realise that, you know, this is a hot spot for you and that this is a little bit difficult for you and I didn't behave in the way. And I went, oh my God, I did exactly the same. I'm reacting in the, in the silly old way and actually I know that I can trust you with my life I'm always safe with you and he said you're always safe with me and apart from the odd hiccup where we've tiny little bit gone back to that in the past because look here's the thing we're real I know you're real I know that you know things have been going on for a lot of years sometimes we can continue that um, pattern all we want to do is reduce the amount of time that we have that reaction and it will definitely trust us it will definitely reduce the level of disconnection and give you the relationship that you want where you're in fantastic connection with each other 99 percent of the time indeed for me it's definitely about having compassion um, as i said for the other person imagine you've got a switch you know, the only reason that they're behaving badly, whether it's the guy or the girl, is because generally speaking, they're in some sort of fear. They've got adrenalized for whatever reason it is. And then the way that you respond to that is critical to the disconnection or the level of disconnection you're gonna have in that moment. So if you can remember to go, actually, they're just frightened right now. All I need to do is be compassionate within myself and then you operate differently and then of course you experience a different them uh, whichever way around it is so and if as a woman we can recognize that men are just doing the driving thing which is the yes. you know very masculine thing to do and that they really do not like to be told how to do that um we will all have a fantastic relationship so uh, it's a, it's an, a tough old subject but anyway and uh, nikki did promise you a, a, an answer to this as well because what we're saying or suggesting here is that most of what happens in the car is your old unconscious pattern being fired off individually and separately and of course because you don't want to be wrong the trick is or the, the, the automatic response is to blame them, yeah? yeah? And that's where disconnection comes from. So how do we stop doing that is a fantastic um, question and something we've, you know, played with for all of our time uh, together. What do we need to do to get ourselves so that we are in control of our unconscious instead of our unconscious being in control of us and us just reacting badly? So in the up-and-coming... Um, weeks and months we are putting on a series of events uh, which are called the secret to life and they're not called the secret to life for nothing because the the one of the keys is that if you manage to control your unconscious you will have a better experience of life in every area so no matter what area you're struggling so say for example right now your business is struggling trust me it's because your unconscious is out of control if you're having a relationship issue it will be because your unconscious is out of control. Actually, and this is a bit more difficult to see, even if you're having a health problem, I pretty much guarantee that we could 
pull it down, 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 and at the end of the pot of doom will yes. be an unconscious that's out of control that could be creating that uh, challenge on health front and, of course, any other. Absolutely, and we we had a, learned a great word over the weekend, didn't we? And that's enjoyability, and I love that word because it's absolutely right what Tony's saying. In our understanding and in our belief and in our experience, that that unconscious behaviour, which we don't know we're going to do, we do it spontaneously. We don't know how to stop doing it. That is the very thing that it stops the enjoyability of life and we believe it's the secret to life. So, yes, we have studied this for a very long time and put together this sort of ultimate event called the secret to life. So no matter what problem you're having right now, you basically put that in a bag and you come along to our <laughs> yes. event and we are going to utilise that until we've got that solved for you. So underneath this video is a box that says, put me on the interested list. Tell me more about this secret to life. I like the sound of that because, you know, basically, as I often say, we're off buying a load of strategies to solve our business problems or what other, other problems we've got, when actually, if your unconscious is out of control, I pretty much say that you've got a 95% chance of that strategy not working. That's actually the statistics say that, not me. So if you want to increase your chances of the strategies of what all bought, paid for and learned working at a higher level, if indeed they're working at all, then learning to control your unconscious is a real secret there. So uh, pop your name in the old box underneath and it will wing us a thing and you'll get an email that will tell you about the next Secret to Life event. Yeah, and absolutely. And, uh, and we're on there, we'll tell you all about it and exactly why we believe it is absolutely Secret to Life and why how you can benefit in all areas of it's your life. It's like the ultimate personal development event that goes where other personal <laughs> development events don't go, just like Star Trek does. <laughs> That's so, right. Cheesy as always. Uh, we've got to quit there. So for me, Tony B, trust you've enjoyed uh, learning about what you can do differently in the car. And for my amazing wife, who now does so much better oh. in the car, it's a joy to drive <laughs> around. We do so many miles. It's so much better being in connection than out of connection Absolutely. in the car. So Absolutely. from both of us, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yes, Bye for now.